outside. All right, everybody, as you just heard, the meeting is being recorded here. So as you hear any information that you would like to listen to later, just look out for that recording, which will be sent to you after this webinar here. But thank you, everybody, so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to see the incredible amount of people who are interested in ownership of a Bella home at Grand Pacifica. I'm personally really excited for these homes. I think they're going to be really quite beautiful. They're probably in one of the best locations uh, at Grand Pacifica, although we have about, about three and a half miles of coastline and, and beach line. There's definitely some beaches that are better than others, and Asuchio Beach, where these homes are located, uh, is definitely one of the prime areas within uh, within Grand Pacifica. So what I'm going to do, I see a handful of people more uh, logging on still over here. What I want to do, though, is have you go to that Q&A section of your control panel and type in where it is you're calling in from. We've had such an international bunch over the last year, and it's fun to see where it is people are dialing in from. So find that Q&A section, type in where you're calling in from, and uh, we'll, we'll just do a, a quick review of that as we give people more time to, uh, to log on here. So, all right, I'm seeing we have Mir. Oh, awesome, Mir, hello. He's in the a greater Vancouver area in British Columbia. We have Edward in Philadelphia. We have Colleen in Edmonton, another Canadian for you, Mir. We have Chuck in Massachusetts. We have Mike in Bozeman, Montana. Primarily the uh, the North American demographic here, based on what I'm seeing with these answers. Oh, Cam, you just uh, <laughs> you 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 just uh, you, you, I can't think of the right phrase here, but you are from the UK, so thank you for uh, disrupting that trend. That's what I was going to say. And then Mark Toronto. All right, I see a lot more people coming on to the line here. Thank you all so much for joining us. Really excited to have you here. My name is Rachel Jensen. I'm the vice president of sales and marketing for ECI Development. Uh, Nicaragua is initially where I started out on my international journey. It was 2010 when my when I made my first trip down to Nicaragua. I was with a medical mission group at that point with my university. Uh, there were about 20, 25 of us, and we spent a few weeks in Nicaragua. I spent one day at Grand Pacifica, and that was our fun day. We got to sit by the pool and have some frozen cocktails and really just enjoy the scenery, enjoy Nicaragua, and, and experience the beauty. Then fast forward a couple of years later, getting ready to graduate college, had no idea what I wanted to do, and ended up taking an internship position with ECI Development, moved down to Nicaragua, gave my parents a, a two weeks notice, graduated from college instead of moving down to Nicaragua, and uh, they they were excited, but I could see that they were a little nervous as well. I saw the blood kind of drain from their face, and they're like, you're going where? You're doing what? But you know, I'm definitely the most adventurous one in the family, and, and I have to say they've, they've visited since, but currently in Belize and do really enjoy this, the Central American, Latin American lifestyle here. And for those of you who have not yet had the chance to visit, I think you're going to be so wildly impressed when you do get on that plane, land in, in Nicaragua, and then get to see the real beauty of the country, the Pacific, the Caribbean, the volcanoes, the lakes. It's very, very similar to Costa Rica, but just doesn't really have that sort of attention yet that Costa Rica does. So again, happy to have you all here with us today. We also have Patrick Hebert. Patrick is going to join us at the end for any of the, the questions and answers that come in. He will be listening to throughout. And then also with us, we have Ali Rodriguez. Ali, why don't you do a quick introduction of yourself? Yeah, thanks, Rachel. I'm happy to be on the line with you all here today and talk about this community, Bella, in Nicaragua. Um, just a little bit of my background is that I uh, was born and raised in Texas, West Texas to be specific. Um, and about four years ago, I realized that, uh, you know, I didn't want to wait uh, until it was too late to be able to go and explore and possibly live in another country. And that is what eventually brought me to the country of Belize, where I'm now a permanent resident. And just to become familiar with and know these different places and explore these different cultures and community has really been uh, quite exciting. And I would bet that, that you people that are on the line with us here today have a similar mind. And that's why you're here and exploring this option that's available to you. Um, my, my job, and, and I don't really call it a job <laughs> as so much as a, an opportunity to share these experiences, these opportunities with our partners. Um, 
I liaise with various people across the globe, and they are really the ones to bring these opportunities to you via educational resources and webinars like this. So glad to have you all on the line with us here today, and I hope uh, that you'll learn a little something and grow a little more familiar with the Bella community. Exactly. And I do want to mention that this, this webinar is really to go through your questions and give you answers for the Bella community specifically. We're going to give you a quick overview about Bella Homes, about Nicaragua generally, but uh, most of the time is really going to be reserved for your questions. We did do a Bella 101 webinar last week. Uh, we're going to be doing another Nicaragua 101 webinar next week. And so we just want to provide those resources to you if you're looking for more information about the specifics. But this is going to be a very, uh, very general overview. Then we're going to dig into your question. So if you're just starting to discover us, uh, it is important for you to know who you are going to be owning with. Uh, doing your due diligence is definitely a key part of ownership of real estate overseas. As an organization, ECI Development has been around over the last 25 years. And our goal really has been to provide clients and uh, customers with the geography of their choosing, providing them with North American quality and standards. And I say North American, but I just mean anybody who appreciates AC in the tropics or hot water um, for their dishes and for their, their showers. And just typically in this part of the world, what we become accustomed to is not necessarily what's built here. And so our co-founders originally saw this huge hole in the marketplace when they first started coming down to Latin America in the late 80s, early 90s. Over time, they started a mortgage company, which has since morphed into a bank. And then they started this development company as a means of providing solutions to folks. Uh, individually and personally, they were buying real estate down here. And they saw that there was just a lot to be desired when it came to the actual construction of the real estate. And as we saw more people at that time starting to retire overseas, going south of their border, stretch their dollars, stretch their pounds a little bit further, it made sense to really start building these communities, giving places uh, uh, providing places for people to come together, have that community, have that common space, have the pool, have the amenities. And it just really wasn't being done well at this time. So since 1996, we've grown tremendously. I, used, I don't think you'll be able to read everybody there on the screen, but I, in total, we have about 125, 150 people in the organization. I know you tend to hear from Ali and, and Patrick and, and Michael uh, and me quite a bit, but there is an entire organization behind us who is geared towards making sure that your home or your investment is well built, well constructed, well taken, at, well looked after, and that of course uh, everything accounting wise is done properly too. So we're going to quickly just jump into an overview about Nicaragua. Again, it's not here to be a total overview like the 101 was, but it is going to be a good summary. We'll jump into the Grand Pacific, a little bit more about the project. And then from there, a couple of highlights about Bella. And then the rest of the time is yours. So think about those questions that you've been wanting to have answered over the last week, week and a half, or months perhaps even. And, uh, and we'll get those answered for you at the end. Just type them into the Q&A section. All right, Ali, floor is yours. All right. Thanks, Rachel. So where is Nicaragua? If you're on the line with us today, you probably already know that. But just as a quick refresher there, there it is on the map with Costa Rica just being just to the south of where Nicaragua is located, kind of dead smack in the middle of Central America. Oh, it's a little sensitive on the buttons there. But just some overview of, of Nicaragua. You can see some bullet points there on the line. But the reality is that Nicaragua is quite diverse, not only in its geography, but in, in its topography and the different um, kinds of activities that you can choose to go out and adventure and be able to experience. So you've got the, the Pacific coast, you've got the Caribbean coast, you've got volcanoes and, and uh, jungles and all kinds of things to go out and just explore. And something that um, is, was quite uh, shocking to me, and I just recently learned this, is that very last bullet point there that um, most international travelers are drawn to its pristine beaches. Of course, I'm a beach baby. I love the ocean. I love the water. But it is also the it also has the largest tract of primary growth rainforest north of the Amazon, which means that there's a ton to be able to get out and see and do and experience for yourself while you're in the country of Nicaragua. 
and just some other things here. I'm not going to read all of those to you. Like Rachel mentioned, we have a full hour long uh, webinar about Nicaragua that goes into all of these different aspects a little bit deeper. But the ones I want to highlight here is the extremely affordable lifestyle. You heard, you've heard us talk about cost of living and just changing your lifestyle to be a little less stressful, a little more carefree, enjoying the freedoms that come along with those lower costs of living. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about it before, but you can find extremely organic fruits and vegetables at really affordable prices, more than what you would, you would think to find like at Whole Foods or something like that. Um, and then of course, great healthcare, because that's something that's always on, on our minds as we get up in our years. And really, even if you're looking at it from an investment perspective, when travelers are going places and they are uh, partaking in these adventurous activities, they want to make sure that if anything were to happen, that they are able to get health care that they would be used to um, in, in North America. So one more thing there is, is that community feel. You know, Grand Pacifica specifically, um, which is our project there in, in Nicaragua, it really does provide this like-minded community feel. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about Grand Pacifica specifically and how that's set up, but all of these little neighborhoods provide a little bit different kind of a community that you, you will find fits your personality and your goals the best. So just some other things here, we touched on a few of these, but um, one of the ones there on the bottom right-hand side, natural and historical treasures, I've gotten to see um, the architecture that's there at those colonial buildings like in Granada, and they are absolutely incredible. You talk about um, photo ops, <laughs> picture opportunities, they are just beautiful and the backdrop of those places is quite something to see and experience on your own. So again, there's so much more that we have to share with you about the country of Nicaragua specifically and generally, um, but we have this comprehensive handbook that's been put together for you to go through, wade through, and bookmark different things that may be of interest to you. You are able to get your free digital copy. All you need to do is send us an email at webinar at ecidevelopment.com. And we will send over that, that digital copy to you. And like Rachel mentioned, we are actually hosting a Nicaragua 101 webinar. So if you prefer to hear the information um, rather than read it, you're welcome to join us for that next week. Be on the lookout for an evite to your inbox with that link and how to get registered. All right, so you've heard us talk about Nicaragua. You can see there to the north is Honduras, to the south is Costa Rica. And where you're going to fly into Nicaragua is the city of Managua. That's where the international airport is located. And you'll see a, just south of that is Grand Pacifica, where we are located along that Pacific coastline. And to the left there, there's some just some great pictures of the different uh, lakes and volcanoes and just rivers. It's just very peaceful kind of feeling there in Nicaragua. Oh, there we go. So a little bit about Grand Pacifica. Again, it's located on the Pacific coast. There's about three and a half miles of total beachfront. And the, and the Bella community that we're talking about today is closer to the Asachio Beach, um, which is one of those world-class surf spots that hosts both beginner and intermediate surfers. A little bit further down the beach, you will run into a more advanced surf beach called the Meast Grinder um, that is, is for the more adventurous souls. I'll be sticking to the Asagio <laughs> Beach myself, <laughs> but um, it's definitely something that you, you know, keep in mind that when you're thinking about people that are either coming to live or coming to experience as a, as a tourist, this is something that truly is incredible. The picture on the bottom right hand side, that is the actual picture from Grand Pacifica. Um, so you can you can see that it, it is exactly as pristine and beautiful as, as we are describing it. So the Bella community, this is the master plan and I'm gonna let Rachel get into this part specifically, but you can see there uh, the coastline there at the bottom part of the screen and the little magnifier there that is actually where the Bella uh, community will be located so Rachel I'm going to let you take it away from here and I'm excited to hear about this awesome thank you Allie 
And, you know, as Ali mentioned, Grand Pacifica is a, a property that has been established in Nicaragua as developers who came there in the early 2000s. And when, when we purchased the property, 2,500 acres at that point, it was really just a pasture. It was a cattle pasture at that point. We've developed probably about 15% of it. So there's still quite a bit of development uh, that will be done over time. And we really see this as a 25, 30, 35 year project. And we are excited to see the growth. And, and what we do as we continue developing is look at creating new neighborhoods and different communities within the Grand Pacifica as a whole. We understand not everybody wants the same sort of home or wants the same sort of investment property. So what you see here on the screen is that master plan uh, to date. And there are different neighborhoods. So if you're listening to this and at the end, you say, you know what, Bella may not be right for me. Uh, you know, maybe it, you want something a little bit smaller. Maybe you want something larger. Maybe you want to build your own home and, and customize it a lot. Then there are options for you. But we are going to be focusing on the Bella neighborhood, as Ali mentioned, is that magnifying, magnified area right over there, if you can follow my cursor. And it is just a really, really beautiful location within the Grand Pacifica property. As I mentioned earlier, there are different sort of coastlines or different beaches within, within Grand Pacifica. And right in front, I mean, truly, imagine waking up in the morning, you uh, open your glass panel doors, you're sitting right there in the water, sipping your your, your fresh Nicaraguan coffee, so good, you don't even need that creamer. And you're sitting there and really just watching the waves roll in. And maybe you're gonna go out for a swim or boogie board or just lounge there and, and listen to the waves. That's the sort of area that this is. And it's very different than the different neighbor, than the other neighborhoods we have at Grand Pacifica, the tiny homes, for example, those are off beach. And um, those are in clo closer quarters and more of clusters. Then we have San Diego Viejo, which is about a quarter acre, a one tenth of an acre at a quarter acre lot where people are building custom homes. But none of the neighborhoods at this point really have that sort of accessibility to the beach where you can just walk right out of your door and down the beach and be at the beach in just a couple of seconds. And none of them really have this sort of really, I would say, luxury and refined um, interior design and architecture that we're going to just display to you in a couple of minutes here. But these homes and some some of the big factors of these homes, and I think what makes them really quite attractive is the fact that they do have eco-friendly features to them. Uh, they will be hybrid, so they'll be connected to the grid, but they'll also be the solar panels. You'll be using solar during the day and then connect up to the grid during the evening. I think this is a huge advantage, especially for this size home. You do want to typically have a, uh, a grid to connect to, or if you do want to be totally off-grid, that is something you can consider as well. Then you can upgrade your solar package and decide to be totally off grid, but you know, it's always nice to have a plan B or a backup. And then in addition to that, I mentioned this before, but you really do have those beautiful waves and uh, you can see right behind Allie and me, yes, they are green screens, but they are taken right there at the Grand Pacifica property. So in addition to seeing those waves roll in, if you go out at about five or 6 p.m., depending on the time of year, and maybe at this point you've changed from your coffee to a glass of wine or, or the Maqua, the national drink there, and you're just watching the sunset go down. And it truly, truly is as spectacular as we're showing you. So these homes are really ideal uh, because of the location with, within the property, within Grand Pacifica, there are a ton of amenities there. Each of the Bella pods that we're gonna talk about, there are about nine, 10 homes in each pod. They each have their individual pool there. So it's, it's really designed to be more luxury, to be more um, private in a sense. And we're gonna just go through that in a little bit more. So we have three different models for you to consider there. There's one two bedroom and then two, two three bedroom models. And we're gonna just uh, to buzz through those. And so this is a great option here uh, for somebody who maybe is planning to rent out their home to digital nomads, or maybe they're a smaller family. Um, you know, I think the nice benefit with these homes and with this community is you have the choice to live in it full time. You can rent it out. You can come and go as you please. If you're somebody who wants to rent it, you can rent out to the digital nomads. Digital nomads we know are coming down for one, two, three, four months at a time. They like to have their bedroom. They like to have a room for a guest. And then they like to have space for an office. And you know, that office space can be the living room that you see here. But what you're going to notice about all the homes is this big glass um, this glass window or a glass door in the front, because in the tropics, we do tend to live outside. And when you're able to just open that door, I have this fresh breeze coming through. It, it really is spectacular. And there's just really not many places like this. I know in the world, especially, um, you know, in the Central American region, where you're able to be within a gated community established in the marketplace over the last 15, 20 years uh, going for these sort of prices. So when you're looking at all in numbers, you're a little bit under 350,000. 
HOA comes out to 286 a month. And this is a two bed, two bath model. If you're looking for something a little bit larger, maybe you are planning to spend your spend six months or, or eight months or 10 months or the full year down there with your family or just simply come and go as you please. Perhaps you have kids or grandkids that you wanna be able to accommodate when they're visiting, then this could be another great option for you. And again, looking at that glass space uh, right there as you're in the kitchen, maybe preparing dinner or families lounging around watching a movie, you are able to just look right out to the beach and, and into the sand. And these are going for a little bit less than 380 when it comes to all in numbers. And again, I'm gonna stop here because I'm just taking a look at the renderings and understanding what the concept and the design is quite elegant. Um, it definitely has that beachy sort of feel to it as well. And then the high ceilings. I think one of my favorite parts about these homes are the vaulted ceilings. So it makes the space just feel a little bit larger than it is. And with those glass doors, the high ceilings, uh, it really does feel quite comfortable and, and spacious. Uh, this this model has probably been one of the most popular. It's the Apollo. It's a three bedroom, two bath. And I think what makes it so popular is that there are the two bedrooms there on the wings, and then they each have their own oceanfront terrace. But a uh, larger in size, fifteen hundred square feet. You do see there's a good amount of, of outdoor space, terrace space, and then from there you have furniture packages. Closing cost comes into about a little bit less than four hundred twenty three thousand. And, and please just remember, this is on the beach. These are uh, built to incredible standards, North American standards, and looking at it, it's just really a beautiful sort of elegant home. And here are some of the, the renderings from the interior of the three bed. And note, if you're planning to put your home into the rental program, you are going to be required to get the furniture package. If you do not want to put your home in the rental program, I know we've had a couple of owners, I see a couple who are on to who are planning just to come and go as they please, let family use it. And uh, maybe you want to customize it a little bit more and, and change the furniture. You don't have to get the furniture package at this point, but if you ever do want to put it into the rental program, know that there will be those upgrade fees in order to do that. So the Bella community is located, if you can follow my cursor, um, right, right, I would say south, I mean south, or just going down, it's not quite south, but just below the parking spaces over there, uh, you have these pods. I mentioned the pods to you earlier. And depending on the pod, there's anywhere between eight to 10 homes. There's a pool for each uh, pod. So you're not sharing it with tons of people coming to use the pool. It really is private and for the homes within that pod. Uh, if, in addition, if you're planning to live in this community, then we will have special dedicated parking spaces to ensure that you are able to get a parking space. I know something that we've talked about before is um, electric cars or electric golf carts. Um, there will be a, a, a space for you to uh, to charge up if that is something you're thinking about. And I don't have the picture in this presentation. And Michael, I know our, our marketing manager, Michael, is on. And Michael, take note of this because it's a really cool thing to add. One of our owners at Grand Pacifica has a solar van. I think he brought it in from China, but it's really quite neat. There's a solar panel on the top of it. And it's a small little thing, um, but he uses the the uh, the sun um, solar to, in order to charge the the car and and have it go through the property. And that's something that that would be perfect for this area here. So just depending on uh, what sort of model you want, you are able to choose here in the different locations. Uh, the Apollo, which is the one I mentioned before, with those two wings on the side, uh, number twelve, that is available at this point. And then number six, 10, 13, and 14, you're able to choose between the Aquarius or the Poseidon. So that's the other two or three bedroom model. You're able to put it there on each of the locations, just depending on, on really what is the most attractive to you. Um, I'm not gonna read each of these numbers here or each of these lines, but do note that there is the option, as I mentioned in some of the spaces there to choose Aquarius or Poseidon. And then specifically for the Apollo number 12, this space is reserved for the Apollo. So if this is something that's a consideration, the Apollo is, then phase two would be the right option for you. And if you are considering renting your home, uh, please just reach out to us and, and let us know. We're able to really work on these numbers. We can hop on Zoom. I think one of the best things for us to do is to hop on Zoom. We can work through different scenarios, different cases at this point uh, for vacation rental. We anticipate occupancy to be about 55%. Um, personally, I think these homes will do very well in the rental market. And the reason that I say that is because at this point, we only have condos on the beach. If somebody wants that beach front, that ocean view, but they're coming with a family or they're coming with another couple, the only option we have for them are condos. And don't get me wrong, the condos are beautiful and, and well-appointed and, and a great location, but they don't have that quick access or the, the immediate access to get to the swimming beach. 
It's not a swimming beach in front of the condos. They had to travel to get to travel on the beach a little bit to get to uh, the swimming beach, but also people like single family homes and understandably so if you're coming down with your friends, family. So uh, they probably would do even better than 55%. That's about our average that we're seeing at Grand Pacifica generally. Um, but then from the long-term rental perspective, so you know, three months or more, I think it could do quite well there too. And what we're seeing now is we have a shortage of long-term rentals at Grand Pacifica because people are just getting so fed up with what's going on in their home country. They're coming down to Grand Pacifica now as their homes are being built and they need a place to stay. So this could be this could be a great option for you in that long-term component, that long-term factor as well. But just compiling the renderings again so you can see what they look like. Again, beautiful beach vibe to it. And it's, it has this luxury, elegant feel, the vaulted ceilings, the integration of the wood, but really built with the, the, the cement and, and, and rebar, so it's a solid structure, but then the finishes there in wood. And then just grab your cocktail and, and go sit on that rocking chair and enjoy those beachfront views that you're going to have. And if this is something that is of consideration and you're looking to move forward, then we will send you the reservation form. Let us know what model you are looking at. Also let us know the home number, the lot number. And then from there, we will send you the paperwork. I do like to give a, a kudos to our property uh, consultants. This is our sales team here. I'm guessing everybody on the line has spoken to at least one person here before. They are just amazing folks. They're sophisticated. They know what they're talking about and are really here to help you throughout the process. So what the, the, the home ownership looks like is these homes are all pre-construction. We begin the construction of each pod when two thirds of the homes in that pod have funded their first 50%. Um, at that time that we get that first 50% in, we're going out and buying materials to lock in prices. You may be listening to this webinar after pod one and pod two have sold out. And guess what? Pod three, four, five prices are going to be higher because those start dates will be in the future. And I'm going to assume that construction prices have uh, increased at that point or are going to increase. So the numbers you see on the screen, by the way, may not be the same at the time that you're listening to this, but of course reach out and we'll fill you the latest. So we begin construction when we have two thirds of the pods owned and that first 50% is in. And if you're looking at what that ownership structure looks like, it is fully titled, it's yours. You choose what name you want it to be titled in. And then you have a couple of different options of how you can pay. Number one is cash payment. Um, you can put the $2,500 refundable deposit down. You fill in the reservation sheet that I showed you a couple of slides ago, you'll fill this in and then either wire or credit card that $2,500 over. After that, we'll send you the final paperwork to review. You have seven business days to go through that paperwork and get back to us with any questions. We talk it through, address anything that's on your mind, and then continue on. Once you want to move forward, then you will send us back a copy, a signed copy of that, a scanned copy, and then you'll put the original in the mail, and then you'll wire that first 50% less the deposit. We let you know when we get the, the funds in, and then the payments thereafter are based on the staged progress of the construction. So 20% is due when the foundation is complete. 20% when the walls are up and then the final 10% when the keys are handed over to you and the closing costs at that point too. We have had a handful of people who prefer to pay everything up front. That way they don't have to think about it. If you do want to do that, let us know. We can certainly talk about some nice advantages if uh, you do want to do that, but it's a, a great way to have those payments staggered over the build period. And it is about a 10 to 12 month build period for these homes, for the Bella homes. So keep that in mind that this payment that you would be making is over about a 10 to 12 month period. Now you can opt to finance. If you wanna finance that's going to be with an international bank in Belize, I have another slide on that in a moment, but I do wanna just highlight the numbers there, the percentages. You can either do 50% down, 50% or 80% down, 80%. If you're doing 50% down, your interest rates are 4.9%. It's a five-year balloon, but it has a 30-year amortization term. So 30 year AM schedule at the end of the fifth year, you'll have a balloon and then you'll pay off that balance or you can refi with key bank at that point. And um, that's a conversation between you and the bank. And uh, that is an option for you. The other one is 80% financing. So if you put 20% down, key bank will be making up that 30% that would be due when uh, you submit that paperwork. So do note that that payment would be made. You will have mortgage payments prior to your home being done. I do want to make that very clear. 
um, those mortgage payments would get paid directly to the bank. But 80% down at that point, interest is 6.9% interest. And then it's a 30 year amortization, but the five year balloon, like we talked about for 50% down. We also accept cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, USDT, Monero. Um, let us know if you prefer to do that. Note if you are using cryptocurrency, there is a 2.5% facilitator fee. We look at the third party operator who makes sure that everything is, um, or facilitator rather, who's making sure that everything is running smoothly and that 2.5% is their fee. Uh, we also accept gold bullion and silver. We have had people actually pay with coins before and you have to get it assessed, send the assessed paperwork to us. And then once we uh, get it, we'll send you an invoice with a breakdown of the coins and the value at that time. If there's anything over what you owe, then we'll apply it towards the closing costs or furniture uh, or perhaps HOA fees or something along those lines down the line. Because I know it can't quite take a, a gold coin and just chop it in half to make it half the value. So we will apply it towards something in the future. And then self-directed IRA. I know we have some Americans online, folks from the US. If you are from the US, you are able to use your self-directed IRA, but it can only be an investment property. It's only an investment property. You cannot personally use it. You cannot apply for residency. It cannot be self-serving. Canadians online, I'm sorry to tell you that you cannot use your RRSP, um, but Americans, you are able to use your self-directed IRA. So we have had people who've done a mixture of both. They had cryptocurrency and gold. They did that. Then the rest was cash or someone was financing and did a mixture. So just up to you to, uh, to, to figure out what the best structure is for you. But we're a very progressive company, I would say. And we want to make it um, available for you as you consider what would be the best way for you to get involved. All right. I'm going to talk about the financing a little bit more because this is a question that's come up. Uh, quite a bit over the last few months that we've been talking about financing with KeyBank. And if you want to get that financing, that 50% or 80%, you're going to work with Key International Bank. They're based actually right across the street over here uh, on the top floor of that building that you see in that picture. And in order for you to get financing with the bank, you'll need to open up a bank account with them. Uh, you'll need to open up a bank account with them. It typically is about five to $600 to set up a bank account with them. And then from there, you'll have to fund it. I don't remember the minimum, but I think it's about $500 that you have to fund in it. And then from there, you'll get the loan paperwork. And in the loan paperwork, you know, they're gonna ask you for some from documents that are required by the central bank, <coughs> excuse me. And even when you're opening up the bank account, there are gonna be documents that they require from the central bank. You are able to do all of this from abroad. You do not need to come to Belize to do it. Of course, we'd love to have you here and, and visit, but you do not need to physically be in the country to do it. Um, if anybody's interested in what those requirements are, send us an email. We have a full list from the bank, but things like a tax return, utility bill that has your name on it. Um, if you're from the States, they'll have you send either a W-2, or if you're not, uh, if you're your own employer, you'll have to provide proof of that. And there are just a few other documents that are required. And that's probably the longest part in the financing processes, you gathering the documents, putting them together, scanning copies to the bank, and then sending them off to Belize. They do need the original documents. Um, and note that when you're financing documents for financing will go to Belize, but then the paperwork documents will go over to Nicaragua. Now I'm going to add a caveat here. So if you are financing your Bella property, so it's a bank in Belize, your property is in Nicaragua you are going to have to open a Belize International Business Company with Georgetown Trust. Conveniently, Georgetown is located on the third floor of the, build of the, the building that you see in this picture here. We will do that email introduction for you, but a Belize International Business Company will be the owner of your Bella home. So it'll be titled in the name of your Belize IBC. And then from there, KeyBank will be able to finance. And the reason for that is because KeyBank is a, a Belizean bank and they need jurisdiction over property in another country. And how they get that jurisdiction is if the property is in a Belize IBC because they have jurisdiction in the Belize IBC assets. So if you default for any reason on your loan, then KeyBank would be able to, uh, to foreclose on that property because it's in that Belize IBC. The cost to set up a Belize IBC with Georgetown is a thousand US dollars. And then you do have annual fees of $657 every year. And that just covers the, the costs in order to keep up the company, to file uh, documents that your custodian needs. 
So do bear in mind that there are going to be additional fees when you're financing because you need to set up that bank account. You need to fund that bank account with a small amount. And then from there, you need to uh, also set up that Belize International Business Company. So bear that in mind. Once your loan is paid off, you can keep the Nicaragua property in the name of your Belize IBC. Or if you want to take it out and retitle it in your personal name or, or whatever structure you want to do, you are able to do that. But you cannot do that until your loan is paid off. Now, I know with uh, with our sales team, when we were going through this, there were definitely a lot of questions that popped up from the sales team members. I want you all to feel free to ask away too. You know, I obviously don't work for the bank or from Georgetown, so if it's too specific, we'll uh, do an introduction to them for them to have that conversation with you. But I at least wanted to make you aware of the fact that there is going to be this extra step and some extra costs if you are planning to finance. So when you decide that you want to move out, move forward, and actually let me take a quick break here um, because I, I can keep talking and talking and talking, but I want to at least get a quick break. If you are somebody who is interested in Bella or perhaps some other Grand Pacifica property, this is going to be the part of the presentation where I start to review the paperwork and go through what that process looks like. Um, I'd recommend you stay on if you are serious about ownership. If you're teetering and you know you're looking at seven thousand different opportunities and you don't know if if this is right for you, then you may not want to stay on. But I at least want to uh, to, to review this for the people who I know are interested, and uh, perhaps in Bella or perhaps one of the other products. So we're going to go through the next few slides here, and then we're going to open it up to Q and A. So when you decide that you want to move forward, our sales team, the pr the property consultant whom you're working with is going to send you an email with a handful of different documents attached to it. In that document or in that email, you're going to see purchase agreements in both English and Spanish. Uh, we do need both of them signed. And if you are financing, the bank is going to require your agreement in English. It's one of the, the, the requirements for the loan process. So we're sending you the paperwork in Spanish. It was translated um, by an attorney in Nicaragua and into the English. And then in addition, there's going to be a limited warranty. There's a one-year limited warranty on your home. In addition to that, there's the HOA agreement. We said that the HOA is 286 a month. In that, you're going to see what's included in the HOA. And then also there's the furniture package. As I mentioned, if you opt to be in the rental program, you are required to have the furniture package. If you don't wanna be in the rental program, you do not need the furniture package. If you ever change your mind, you will have to upgrade to get um, up to the furniture package standards. So just bear that in mind. Uh, we are buying furniture as close to the renderings as possible. Uh, I know for our condo building that just opened up, it looks really, really good. And I mean, it's almost identical to the rendering. So that was exciting to see, um, but we are going to offer that furniture package. And truthfully, you know, I would highly recommend it unless you're planning to relocate to Nicaragua and you're going to take the time to do the shopping for your home just so much easier to do the, the turnkey furniture package. And then there's also the Grand Pacifica Rental Management Agreement. This is going to be also in English and Spanish. And in this document, you are going to have the option to participate in one of two rental programs that we have. And I want to be very clear about this because I know there have been some people who didn't either read the agreements or didn't hear us when we mentioned this on the previous Bella webinars or just general property webinars is if you want your property uh, to be rented out, it does have to be through the Grand Pacifica Rental Management Association. And then with that, there are a couple of different options for you to participate in. If your primary goal is investment, then I would highly recommend that you look at the investor, uh, the, the investor rental program. The investor rental program is geared towards somebody whose primary goal is return on investment. And what this, what this program says is that you as the owner of the home have six weeks of personal usage per year, four weeks during low season, two weeks during high season. And then outside of that time, it's put in the rental program and you are earning money from the rental income that comes in. That's the investor rental program, six weeks of personal usage per year. You let us know when you want to come down. And if you want to stay above and beyond that, that six weeks, then it's only 30% of the rack rate in order to stay beyond that six weeks. Again, really geared towards someone who's thinking numbers, thinking investment. If you're somebody who wants flexibility, you wanna be able to come and go as you please, 
then I would recommend the lifestyle rental program. The lifestyle rental program is geared towards somebody who wants that sort of flexibility where you can come to the country for however long you can stay in your property for however long you want. And then when you're not there, it can go into the rental program. Now, do note that we uh, prioritize the homes that are in the investor rental program and we'll rent your home when all of those are rented or occupied. Or let's say you have the Apollo home, for example, where there's only one Apollo home per pod. Uh, that probably is going to be a pretty in-demand home because it is three bedrooms. It has the privacy terraces. Then we just go in line of, of the next Apollo that's available. Um, so if you want maybe not as common of a model that would to, to provide more uh, rental options, then I would recommend the Apollo um, if, if ROI is an incentive to you. But you can do the lifestyle rental program, come and go as you please. It can be rented out after all the other homes in the investor rental program. Are chosen and, and what you can also do and i recommend this to clients who are not really sure what they want i'm like you know what start with the investor rental program uh, and this, this is for folks who don't necessarily want to move maybe they've never been to nicaragua before they don't know if they're going to like it or want to spend more time there start with the investor rental program you can come down for four four weeks if you want four weeks a whole month and if at that time you want to spend more time there, then let's take it out of the investor rental program or relocate people from the other home. And then you are able to join the lifestyle rental program, or you can start with the reverse, start with the lifestyle come and go. And then from there, you can put it into the investor rental program if you're seeing that you're not coming down as often as you think you are. So you can, you can change, you can go back and forth. Um, you know, we don't recommend that to do that every month. But you do have to give us typically about a 60, 60 day notice if you do want to switch programs or take it out of the rental program. Then take a quick, quick sip of water here. Hold on. <laughs> um, but you know, I would say that there really aren't any surprises in the paperwork. I have to say that that probably is the, the section that surprises the most people, even though we've talked about it, is the ability to rent it out when you're not there. And then what sort of program you do want to be in as an owner if you are putting yours into the rental program you can opt if you want people to be able to smoke in your home or if you want to allow pets uh, as a whole grand pacifica is very pet friendly so we do allow cats and, and dogs and if you do not want your home to be rented with an animal you just sign off on that in the paperwork and then we make a note of it when it goes into the rental program in nicaragua they do need your original copies in order to process a deed so what that means is you, we'll send you the documents, you'll print it, you'll send us a scanned copy after you, you put your initials on it, and then you're going to mail us the original copies. Um, I would highly recommend only using FedEx or DHL. Uh, and the reason for that is because we have had people send paperwork before and then it just goes missing. You know, inter international mail is not quite what we, we would expect it to be at, at 20, in 2021, but it is really quite good if you're using FedEx or DHL, um, but we send you all of this information when it is that you do decide to move forward there. Uh, and then in addition to that, we will send you any addendums if you are planning to have a washer dryer, for example, and then if that's not included in the furniture package or um, in addition to that, another addendum that we've created for people is if you're financing and sometimes it takes you know, one to two months in order for your bank account to get set up and your financing to get approved. We can create an addendum for you that says if for any reason your financing is not approved, then we will send you your money back. Um, we've never had that issue. Not good. We have great relations with the bank. And uh, you know, the, the only reason they really would deny you is if you're wanted um, you know, by Interpol or you have some, some record when they're doing a, a background report on you. Um, you know, due to money laundering or whatever it is, but but you really, it's it's very difficult to not get approved. But we can create that addendum for you, which gives um, owners more peace of mind as well. And then also the surveyed lot map of your specific survey, we will set or of your specific home lot, we will send that to you so that you can see exactly what the dimensions are. And then once we receive that final payment from that final ten percent, home is complete. Then we begin the titling process. Uh, as you saw in previous um, previous webinars before, and just general information, titling costs in, in Nicaragua is 3%, 3%, 3%, 3 and then from there, you'll send that 3% with your final 10% when the keys are handed over. We have an in-house attorney, Daniel Escobar, who will be the one to do that title transfer from Grand Pacifica to you. Um, do note that Grand Pacifica does have title insurance. 
Unfortunately, the company uh, that we were working with no longer works in Nicaragua. So once we transfer title from us to you, you will not get that title insurance, but do you know as a whole, Grand Pacifica does have it. So I know that's pretty reassuring to people when they are looking at, uh, at ownership within Grand Pacifica. And then if you're planning to move down there, there are different residency options for you. Um, if you're planning to do the investor rental pro or the investor uh, residency program, investor residency program, you do need to invest $30,000 into the country and ownership of a Bella home works perfectly for that. And then from there, uh, it's a five-year residency. It's renewable, but you do have to come down every six months in order to renew it. But I do want to mention with this one, you do need to title your property in the name of a, of a, of a Nicaragua company, a local Nicaragua company. So there'll be the home and then the Nicaragua Corporation will own your home. And from there, you'll be able to apply for residency. So essentially the attorney that we introduce you to will set up the corporation for you. We'll do the paperwork in the name of your corporation and then there'll be that structure there. If, if you're planning to finance um, and you wanna do residency, there's just a, so many extra steps because you need the Belize IBC, you need the Nicaragua local corporation, and there's just some challenges with who the owner would be of each because technically the bank needs to be the owner of the Nicaragua Corporation and that then wouldn't really qualify you for residency. So I would say if your primary goal is residency, I wouldn't recommend financing or um, if you do need to finance then consider the pension program for people who are 45 years or older, but you do need to have a pension coming in of $600 a month. Um, from your, your pension just outside of Nicaragua. So it may not necessarily be ideal, but you can, we can certainly look at other options for you if neither of these work for you. Now, this brings us to the fun part is the questions and answers section. So um, what I'm going to recommend that we do is have you all type there into the Q&A section, what questions are on your mind, what we can go through deeper with you, um, I do, I mean, as I see them coming in, I'm going to get those answered, but I want to answer a couple that I know I've been asked quite a bit, and we'll just get those right, right, uh, right out of, we'll just get those answered right out of the gates here, and maybe they answer what's on your mind. So one of the questions I get is about the titling. Is it fully titled? Is it freehold? Is it strata? Uh, is this a lease? I know in a lot of properties in the coastline in Mexico, those are Fida Camiso, which is a lease. In, in Nicaragua, you do get title to your property you do get title to your property. This is specifically within Grand Pacifica. I can't, that's not a blanket statement for all of the developments in Nicaragua because they all operate a little bit differently. But at Grand Pacifica, you receive title to your property. If it's a condo structure, then you get, um, they call it escritura publica, um, or uh, they call it a horizontal property regime, sorry. If it's a condo, they call it horizontal property regime, HPR. If it is land ownership, then it's escritura publica, uh, which is when you own the land and you own the structure on the land. If it's a condo, then you own the, the space and the, the four walls of the condo. So with these Bella homes specifically, though, you own the land and you also own the home that is on the land there. Uh, I know that's important for a lot of people and you do get titled. Typically, the titling process takes three months, three to four months once we receive that final payment from you. And then the titling fees, Daniel Escobar, will be in touch. He'll ask you to complete a power of attorney that he sends over to you. And then uh, you'll get that power of attorney completed. You'll have to send it to a consulate, the Nicaraguan consulate in your home country or in the country surrounding your area. And then um, they'll just confirm that it is, that it's a, that it is the doc, that you are the person that you say it is and that it's a legal document in Nicaragua and then mail that back to us. And then from there, you're able to, uh, Daniel's able to work on that title for you. So it does typically take about three to four months after you send that power of attorney to Daniel. All right, what other questions can I answer for you? Why don't we give some uh, to, to Patrick. Patrick, can you tell us a little bit more about the construction methodology with these Bella homes? Sure, thanks, Rachel. Um, well, first of all, this is, you know, in terms of areas, this is probably one of the most you know, beautiful beaches that I've been into, been to in, in the world. The, the Ascio Beach is what it's called right in front of the Bella area is, is spectacular. Uh, miles and miles of empty beach and, you know, on low tide, it's just, you can walk forever. You know, even towards the water, it goes way out and it's just a spectacular place. Great, great swimming beach. 
Um, and as you mentioned there, you know, earlier, it's good for surfing as well. Um, there's a river that comes in right, right beside Bella and, uh, you know, for stand up paddle boarding or kayaking and that sort of thing, there's 600 different species of birds that come through that area and all, you know, lots of different kinds of wildlife. Um, the right beside the Bella area and, and beside the Ava area, that's the other community right, right next to Bella. There's a, a, a common area with, you know, there'll be a little bar and restaurant on the, on the kind of the peak corner where the river runs into the ocean. So you have some beautiful sights there um, or beautiful sunsets, but you can also see both the river and the ocean. It's really, really a pretty spot. And, uh, you know, yoga palapas, little ice cream shops and things just, you know, surf shop or swimwear and that sort of thing. So that's all coming in the in the near future there as well. You can't really see it so well on the on this site map because it's it's kind of in that white space to the left, but you can sort of see part of the river there. And that, that river continues and goes into the ocean, kind of takes a bend to the left. But um, as far as the homes themselves, they're uh, very, very sturdy. They're they're concrete and steel. They'll you know they'll be here a thousand years from now. <laughs> so, you know, we, we build everything at, you know, in, the, in these kind of environments, especially beachfront in the tropics that are concrete and steel. Um, you know, if you build out of wood, you're going to you're going to have problems with, you know, the, the termites and things like that. So there, there's wood features that we conclude, but obviously it's, you know, it's the wood is, is treated and uh, they're, they're really, you know, very solid homes. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, too, these are hybrid systems that we, we put in there. Um, so they're, they're, they're solar assist. So, I mean, they, they, theoretically, you, you can go pretty much without using any grid, electrical grid power at all if you're, if you're light. Like, I, I've become acclimat, acclimatized to, to Central America now. I, you know, my air conditioner is set at, I don't know, 28, 29 degrees, which in Celsius is probably about 80, 82. I don't even like it any cooler than that because I, that's just where I'm comfortable now. I'm, I'm Canadian. I moved down to, to, uh, to Central America to get rid of the, the cold weather. And so I, I mean, the last thing I want to do is have the inside of my house be like a freezer. So if you're, if you're you know, you, as you become acclimatized, you're, you're going to cool your, your home less and less. And um, you'll, you'll find that your, your power usage is, is mostly associated with your air conditioning. You obviously never have to heat the home. Um, and so there's, there's that. Temperatures in, in the Grand Pacific area are always between, you know, mid seventies to, to mid nineties, pretty much all year round. So, you know, that, that's, you get the green season and you get the, the dry season and it's a, it's just a really, really beautiful spot. Um, in one of the, one of the photos you had on here is actually my wife and my home. Um, we live in, in our, our, our main home is in one of the condominium buildings there on the beach as well. It's a little further down, a little further to the south from, from where Bella is. But uh, it, it's just a spectacular place. You, you'll probably never find prettier sunsets than, than at Grand Pacifica. And they're different every evening. And, and the, the people really love to come. You know, we, most people kind of meet at the, at the restaurant at the Grand Pacifica. It's a it's got a beachfront restaurant with an infinity pool and it, you know, everybody sits there and moves the tables together and chit chats and has, you know, a glass of wine or whatever. And so it's a, it's a real community feel a very, you know, it's a great, it's a great time. And like, I think you mentioned earlier, Ellie, the, you know, kind of like-minded people, you know, just people that are, you know, wanting to get away and, and, and have a more relaxed lifestyle than, and you know what's going on in other parts of the world right now. Awesome. I'm gonna just I'm getting a bunch of questions here um, from the chat, and then also I've had some people text me um, who weren't able to join or or on and just not able to find the Q and A section. So I'm going to just read those out, and then uh, Patrick, this may be a good one for you here. Um, talk about. Do you mind talking about the high tide and any erosion risks? Um, this part of the. Can you still hear me? I just want to yeah. make sure. That we're, I'm in Panama City right now, not too far away from Nicaragua, but we're having a lightning storm. So if the power goes out, that's why I'm, I'm awful. So. <laughs> he just didn't like the question, so he hung up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a, a good excuse for not answering. But um, <laughs> the, this part of the, of the beach, I mean, it, it, it kind of goes up and down a little bit. The, there, it's probably a six to 10 foot um, 
kind of ridge at the edge of the of the beach here. So there'll be steps down and, and beach access there, but you know, you are a little bit higher than than the sand itself. So as you walk out, you, you're only a you're only a stone's throw, literally a few feet from from the beach, but you have steps down. Um, there, you know, because it's lower and it's it's uh, a gradual slope, it's kind of built to to withstand the uh, you know the high tide and you know you, at some time in the year you do get some some high tide mixed with uh, with storms. So the 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 waves actually do kind of come up far enough on the on the beach to to kind of come up against that cliff, but it, in areas like this, it's it, you don't have the erosion because um, because it's already kind of nature has already taken care of that and sloped it. Whereas you know if you're living on a a fifty foot high cliff, you sometimes will have the waves hit it hard enough that it'll eat away at at the at the cliff. But this this is pretty pretty pretty. Uh, pretty safe from that standpoint. Awesome, and this is a great question that uh, really segues nicely into what you just answered there, Patrick. Mike is asking, are you required to have flood insurance or is it part of the HOA? Um, the, the HOA takes care of common areas. You're, you're, you know, you're certainly you know, allowed to have in homeowner insurance, which is more content insurance, uh, but you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to have insurance. Um, the, when it comes to flooding, like, First of all, you know, the, the ocean's not going to flood your home, but if, if, if you know, if for some reason, I don't know, so, you know, I had a water pipe break or whatever, then the beauty of these homes is they're all concrete. They're, the, the floor is tile. And literally, I mean, people in Nicaragua, that's how they kind of wash their floors. They take a bucket of water and they dump it on the floor and they mop it around and, and then push it out the door. So your, your house is built for, for, you know, if there was ever water in it. So it's not like in North America where you have a, a, a stick home, like made out of wood, you have drywall that's, you know, get going to get damaged and, and all sorts of replacement. It's literally, you know, you could take your furniture out and pressure wash the inside of your home and you'd be done. So it's, it's not really an issue there. Awesome. And I know Patrick, you and Andrea spent a lot of time in Nicaragua. You, you live there, you're a uh, resident of Nicaragua. So you really have that experience of living at the property, connecting with other folks who are there. Um, and so this question here from Mark is, you know, I guess pertains to lifestyle, but also investment for people who are coming and visiting the property. He's asking how close are offsite restaurants, markets, and other amenities? Well, there, there's a restaurant on the, on the um, resort right now. There's going to be one, two more, not, not too distant future. Um, there, there's a number on the way just outside the gate as you, as you, there's a river outside the gate, you cross the river and go up a hill and there's, there's other restaurants along the, along the road there. There's a town called Masa Chapa, which is only, I don't know, a few miles away, maybe, maybe a 15, 20 minute drive away. There's a lot of restaurants in there. Some great beachfront restaurants that we go to a lot. There's a number of places along there as well. Obviously Managua is a city of about 3 million people tons of restaurants. Um, Granada is one of my favorite cities in the world and you know, a, a typical Spanish colonial city right on, 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 on the lake and the, you know, the, the volcano lakes around there and everything. So there's, there's just a ton of restaurants within, you know, uh, in driving distance and a lot of things to see within that area too. And markets, I mean, I, Andrea, my wife and I, we, you know, I, when you first come down to Nicaragua, you probably think, oh, I, want, I just want to go shop at, you know, your typical kind of North American or European grocery store. And, you know, we do that too occasionally, but we also like to go to, uh, there's, a, there's another a village kind of town nearby called San Rafael del Sur, which is St. Ra Saint, Saint Ralph of the South, I guess, in English. And um, they have a great little market there. And I tell the story a lot. We go there and, and you know, we fill up like those those burlap sacks that kind of come up to your hip you know they give you one of those as your I guess that's the true kind of uh, organic bag that you can really bring for shopping these days but you know we fill it up with fruits and vegetables and the, obviously in the climate and tropics like this you have some amazing you know star fruit and and you know what papaya and all you know obviously bananas oranges lemons and limes and everything but we fill it up with that and potatoes and tomatoes and all the different vegetables. And, you know, you can certainly buy 
you know, your steak and everything there too. But the, you know, the last time we were there, we went shopping and, and literally filled that up to kind of my hip height. And it was, it was under $5 for all the groceries. And so it's, it's a remarkably inexpensive if you, if you, if you know where to go. And I, and I personally like that anyway, because it's all, it's all organic. It's not, it's not like a claim that, oh yeah, you know, we sell organic when you got to wonder about it. The Nicaraguan farmers cannot afford to spray their, 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 their fruits and vegetables with, with pesticides or herbicides. So it's, it's just naturally organic because that's, that's what it is. All right, and then the question here, this is a good one, accessibility to amenities are currently in place like the Las Perlas pool. And uh, you know that's a good question just generally because each community does have its own pool. So what does that usage of the other amenities look like? Sorry, can you hear me still? Because I'm having a little yeah. technical problem yeah. on my side. Can you repeat the question? I can't see it anymore. Sure, so it's accessibility to amenities that are currently in place like the Las Perlas pool and any of the other amenities. Yeah, I mean the, the the property is very walkable. It's all, you know it's got a very natural graded slope right from the entrance all the way to the beach. A lot of people have you know bicycles and many most people walk around. It's beautiful, especially at you know sunset or sunrise to walk around. Others have golf carts, and obviously lots of people have their own vehicles as well. But you know you can certainly walk you, from Bella to the to the existing restaurant. You can walk down the beach. It's a beautiful walk. Um, it's maybe a 20 minute walk or so. The, uh, you know, you can obviously walk down the roads or take a golf cart or a car or whatever as well. But the, the amenities are, you know, going, can continue, continuing to be built as well. So we just finished some tennis courts and pickleball courts that are being, being you know, well, they're almost finished. They're just being completed now. You know, bocce ball and different types of things like that. You know, there's horseback riding. Obviously, the golf course is a beautiful um, amenity as well. Um, the, you know, the number four golf hole, the green there is kind of like the Pebble Beach hole in California. It's a, it's a spectacular one right up against the ocean. Very scenic. So there's, there's things to do certainly within the, within the community and then lots to do outside of it as well. All right. Next question I'm seeing here. Is the road from the hotel to Bella finished and paved? That's from Mike. Yes, the, the, we're, we're literally only a few feet away of being paved all the way to the Osachio entrance um, or the parking area around the Osachio beach, which is past Bella. So that is now paved. All right, nice. And James is saying, I've never had this question before, James. So thank you for asking it. He's saying, can you bring a small boat in and out of the river into the ocean? That's for you, Patrick. Yeah, there's actually a couple of residents there that do have small boats, small power boats. Um, and one guy actually has a, a small sailboat. Uh, they, there, there's no marina at the property yet. It's, it's in our future plans. I'm um, not going to promise any date on that, but there are, you know, if you're, one, I, I love sailing. I'm a, I'm a sailor. I, I, you know, certainly I've, I've lived on sailboat for and, and other boats for multiple years of my lifetime. And uh, so I, I love boating and, and, you know, the, that the area out there certainly for fishing and things like that is amazing. Um, the, the, the closest full size marinas are a couple hours away though. So if you, if you're, you know, if you're talking about a, a larger boat and then, then you're going to have to, and that requires being in a marina, then you're a little ways away from it at this point. Got it. And then the next question here is the security of the property since it's open to the public beach. Yeah, we have full, full-time security, 24-hour security on the property. I mean, really, it's, it's mostly there to make people feel comfortable. Um, Nicaragua is a very safe country. It's, you know, usually rated the second safest country in all the Americas next to Canada. Um, and so, you know, we don't really have or ever really have any problems, but there is security uh, there, you know, in all the communities, and that, that's included in your HOA fees. Perfect. And then the next question is pretty general. Sorry, I got on my questions text up here. So um, it's a pretty general one, but it's about the weather. And I know, you know, we mentioned tropics and we mentioned it being warm every, uh, every day in the tropics. But Patrick, you obviously live there. You came down from Canada. What was your experience like with, with the weather and you know, during what, when is the best time of year to come and, and the sort of generalities with the, the weather question? 
Well, being Canadian for, you know, when I'd say for the, took me about six weeks to two months when I first kind of permanently came down yeah, to, to really get acclimatized. I mean, it's one thing when you're on a vacation, whether you're going to, you know, whatever Mexico or Costa Rica or Nicaragua or wherever, you know, you, you, you want it hot. You're, you're hanging out in the sun and the beaches and everything. And, and, but after you move down there, it's always like that. Right. So you do, it does take a little time to get acclimatized. Some people, you know, you know, feel like the first few weeks are like, wow, this is, this is really warm. But uh, I mean, I, I love it. I don't like being cold. I grew up in the central prairies of Canada where we had, you know, minus 40 in the winters and I never want to feel that again. And I don't intend to. So, you know, the, 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 the seasons, there's really two distinct seasons. Temperature wise, it's always quite similar. March, March and April is, is kind of what they call their center of their summer. That's the hottest time of year. Um, the rest of the year is all quite similar in temperature. As I mentioned before, it's kind of at nighttime, you know, in the, going to say in the mid seventies and in the daytime in the eighties to nineties. So that, that's kind of, but you know, year round from, from May, the locals will tell you May 15th is the beginning of the green season. So literally it, it's that, you know, almost set your watch by it, certainly set your calendar by it. Um, so from about May 15th to about November 15th, is what we call the green season. It, it rains a bit more at that time of year. I really like that time of year because everything gets very lush and green. And it, you know, the rain typically happens at night uh, and then it's cooler because of it. You know, or sometimes you get, you know, if, even in like Texas, Louisiana, you get these kind of, you know, mid, midday rainstorms that last for 15 minutes. And you know, I, I was last living in Vancouver Island, which has similar um, uh, weather to Seattle. And, in, you know, those there you get, I don't know, six weeks without seeing the sun sometimes. And it's dreary and, and, and depressing, to be honest. But this, you know, when I say rainy season or green season, it's nothing like that. It's you get a you probably get, you know, six, six weeks worth of rain in 15 minutes. But then it's over and the sky clears up again. And it's a, you know, a nice, refreshing day. So that's actually my favorite time of year. Then from early December or late November back to May again. Um, you, know, you know, it's very, very sunny. It's all, you know, almost no chance of rain and it gets dry. So, you know, you, you, you've got to understand that, you know, then things, the grass will turn brown and, and sort of thing, but it's, it's just part of the nature cycle. But it, you know, we used to have people that would come down in January or something and, and stay at Grand Pacifica for a few weeks and, and be worried about whether it was going to rain or not. They say, "Oh, you know, last year we went to Hawaii and it rained the whole time. We didn't really have much fun." And I used to tell them, "You know, if it rains when you're staying there in January, February, we'll give you your money back because I can almost guarantee you 99.999 percent of surety it's not going to rain." So that you know, it's very two two very distinct seasons. Temperature-wise, it's not that different. Moisture-wise, it is. Got it. And then does, does Nicaragua get uh, hurricanes or earthquakes? I have that question about natural disasters and, and the concern of these homes. So just talk a little bit more about that, Patrick. And I know we're a little bit over, but um, these are some great questions. And obviously you all are uh, very interested. So we're going to get those answered for you in the, the next five, 10 minutes here. But the question, Patrick, was natural disasters and, and the, the construction too. So how do those two correlate? I know you talked about the construction methodology. Um, but maybe we just reiterate that with uh, with the natural disasters. Sure. Um, well, hurricanes is an easy one. We're on the Pacific coast, not the uh, Caribbean. So no, we don't get hurricanes. I mean, you get oh, very occasionally, you know, it, first of all, hurricanes pretty much are in the, you know, the Northern part of the Caribbean and they'll, you know, come across the Atlantic into the Caribbean and steer up towards, you know, Texas or Florida or whatever. Um, very seldomly do they come down into the Nicaragua, Costa Rica kind of Southern range of the Caribbean. But when they do, they, they also hit the Caribbean coast, which is the eastern side of the country. And Nicaragua is, by, by Central American standards, is a, is a wide country. Um, so by the time any of those storms have come across the land, they've completely died out. And it, it, it often means really heavy rain for a day or two if, if one of those storms hits the east coast. But by the time it hits the Pacific coast, you know, it's just rain. Yeah, you know, so with with some maybe stronger winds than usual, but not nothing like hurricane style winds. Um, but uh, yeah, there's you know we're we're on the uh, we're on the, the the you know the the 
what's it called? The Ring of Fire, I guess, is the volcanic range through, you know, from Alaska down to the tip of Chile. And, you know, that, that fault line that runs along the whole Pacific coast of the, of the continent, you know, does cause earthquakes. And so, yes, it's in an earthquake zone. We get you know, semi-regular earthquakes. You know, the good news is that almost always there, it's kind of just a pressure release. Um, the fault, you know, the fault line is not kind of in the middle of the land like it is sort of with a San Andreas one in, in California. So, you know, you, you feel earthquakes once in a while and, you know, we, we haven't had any, we, 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 we occasionally will say, we'll remind people that if it's over 6.0 and it's centered in the water, then we, we evacuate the property and that, help, that happens very seldomly, but there's a hill right beside the property. So, you know, that's just a precautionary thing, but all the homes are built with, uh, like I said, concrete and steel and the foundations are made to, to earthquake standards. I, I could go into a lot of detail on how that all works, but the, you know, it, it really minimizes. They're, they're made to move as a unit rather than, um, you know, have one wall flexing differently than another wall and, uh, you know, causing cracks in the homes and stuff like that. So we've, we've had very minimal issues with, with earthquake damage unless somebody, you know, customizes, custom builds their own home and doesn't, doesn't build it to earthquake standards. Perfect. And then Mike is asking, is there a mosquito problem? No, I mean, the, the, the main thing, uh, the, the, the problem, I guess, I wouldn't call it a problem, but at, at dusk, um, literally 15 minutes after the sun sets, there's uh, no seams that, or sand fleas. So if you're by the beach, that can be a little bit irritating, but they literally go away as soon as it's dark. So it's just the time of dusk that they're out. I don't know exactly why that is, but um, the mosquito problem isn't bad. There's not much standing water. Um, the, the, the country actually, you know, has some, you know, guys that come out every once in a while and, and, and check that, you know, people haven't kind of abandoned their pool or something and left it so that it becomes a breeding ground. But uh, the river, the river is, is low enough that it's, it's brackish water, which means it's, it's a mix of salt water and, and uh, fresh water because the waves that come over the, over the beach add salt water to it. So the, you know, the fish have all evolved to be kind of living in brackish water. There's corvina, which is a very common, really good tasting fish um, that's in the, in the river there. But, but mosquitoes won't breed in, in anything with salt in it. And obviously the ocean is all salt water. So, and, you know, they only will breed where there's standing water and the, and the soil doesn't really you know, allow for standing water for very long. So, yes, there are mosquitoes, um, you know, when the rainy season first starts. Um, in May, it usually hits pretty hard. And then there may be areas, you know, where, I don't know, people have left containers lying around or barrels or whatever it is, and mosquitoes find a way to breed, so they have some, but it's not, you know, it's, it, you know you'd be surprised. I would say about half of the homes at Grand Pacifica don't even have screens in their windows because it's just really not a bug issue. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a, a time for everything. And, they're, they're, you know, when the rainy season starts, that's kind of when everything kind of comes out of the woodwork but the uh you know you get the the flies like the house flies for a couple of weeks which is annoying if you're eating outside and there's house flies all around but they they don't have a very long life cycle and then it's the kind of the cool bugs that i actually like like the dragonflies the butterflies and and those seasons come and you'll be amazed at the number of butterflies especially if you're well we do a lot of landscaping to attract you know you know certain kind of butterflies too so it just makes for you know there's certain kind of flowers that they like and and so it, it's really pretty so now there's not really you know in general just not really a, a a big bug problem all right and then um someone's asking about politics and the elections and you know i know that that's a big a big subject to talk about uh do you patrick just want to give a a, a quick a quick have a quick discussion about that and then now uh, we can wrap it up here sure yeah i mean the, you know nicaragua has a long history of you know from back in the 70s with you know people remember the sandinistas and all that sort of thing and and uh you know they got a lot of bad press in you know cnn or whatever over the that time frame so people my age or older remember that and have this kind of hangover thought in their head about 
oh, Nicaragua is not safe and it's politically unrest and all this stuff. And but you know that's been a long time ago. Uh, there, you know, we can talk about some other things that have happened over politically over the over the years. But in general, I mean, it's a very um, I don't know how to put it. It's a very subdued kind of country. The people are extremely friendly. The reason I chose with my family to immigrate to Nicaragua, become a resident of Nicaragua, because it was my favorite country in, in all the Central American area, and I wanted to be in Central America. And a lot of that was just because of the friendliness of the people and obviously the, the beauty of the countryside, the, the fact that you've got most spectacular beaches and lakes and volcanoes and and probably at a fifth of the cost of Costa Rica. And so that was, you know, a lot of driving forces and the safety and everything. But, you know, we, we've worked, um, we have a, a foundation called Help Them Help Themselves that does a lot of work in the communities, you know, building schools or homes or, or clinics or doing medical uh, missions and dental missions and things like that. And we get a lot of help from the, from the government that, you know, the, the existing government is is the Sandinista party, right? They're 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 there and they're but they're you know very helpful. We've had no issues. Uh, we get you know lots of lots of support from them. So yeah, there. I mean, it's not it's not perfect. There's a there's an election coming up. It, it's usually not so much what the government does. It's what the reaction to the what you know the elections. But Latin American elections are very passionate things. I mean, I I think I think. The U.S. is starting to feel a little bit more like, you know, around election time, like like Latin America does. And they're, they're, it's very, you know, you're, you're either with the party that's in power or you're not. It's just not much in the middle. So they're, it's a passionate time, but the people are extremely friendly. And that, you know, that it goes up, that, that passion subsides until the next election. But, you know, there is an election coming up here in, in November of this year in Nicaragua. And, you know, I'm sure there will be you know, demonstrations and things like that. It's just part of the thing. But if you stay away from politics, I, I just recommend that anybody that, you know, whether you're a resident or not, I, I'm a Canadian citizen and a Nicaraguan resident. I just don't get involved in the politics at all. It's not none of my business. Um, you know, like I said, the people are extremely friendly. Uh, I, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend, you know, being involved in protests or anything if they happen, but, you know, it, it, it's no different than in the U.S. or Canada. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be inside a protest either. It's just not necessarily a safe place to be. But you know, that from that standpoint, there you know the politics are 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 there. But you know, we've always had we as a company stay out of the politics. It doesn't matter to us who's in who's in power in the in the country. We we work with them. So. All righty, yeah. fantastic. And I does anyone have us? Did you have anything else you want to add there, Patrick? Sorry, I think I was putting off a little bit. No, uh, that was it. Okay, great. And then there's just one more question that came in um, about the parking. You mentioned people live there will have a reserved space. Will anybody who's staying at the homes for rental will eat, will they have a space as well? So essentially, will all will all homes have a reserved space for parking? Yeah, they'll have a reserved space, and then a visitor there will be a visitor area, visitor parking area as well. And so it's much like if you you know go visit friends that that live in a condominium or whatever, they have a reserved spot and. And if, you know, if they're not using it, then the renter would use it, right? Right. All right, perfect. And I see Jim is asking here about banks, specifically Scotiabank. I would recommend, uh, Jim, that you reach out to your Scotiabank and see how it would work with the uh, the Nicaraguan Scotiabank. Um, but other than that, I'm not seeing any other questions come through. I know, guys, we covered a lot of information. And uh, I really hope you all do decide to become a part of the community. These homes just truly really are spectacular located in a really prime beachfront location there within an established community at, in Nicaragua. And I think that you would uh, really enjoy it. And so come on down, visit us, see us in person. And in the meantime, let us know as any questions arise. Ali or Patrick, any last comments before we jump off here? Nope. No. I just, <laughs> go ahead, Ellie. <laughs> I was just go going to ahead. say every time, every time we do another one of these presentations, I, I truly learn a little bit more, um, you know, about it from from an owner's perspective, and and so I hope that you all on the line were, you know, able to to further your understanding of what this community is and and the direction that it's headed. So just happy to be a part of it, and uh, thanks a lot, Rachel and Patrick. Yeah, and I'll I'll just add that you know I. 
I live there. My wife and I live there. Um, you know, it's a beautiful area. That I, we're, I'm a resident of, of Nicaragua. So anybody that, you know, it'd be great to have you folks as, as neighbors. We know we, we love to grow the community. It makes, you know, the diversity of more people coming in always just makes it more interesting. And, and it's, it's just, it's a, it's a great place. And, and it's a very centric place for, for doing things. You know, you're about the same distance from Leon, which is a beautiful city, Granada, you know, the main capital of Managua. So, and there's lots of different things to do. So I I'm, certainly, I'm a big fan of Nicaragua and I'm sure you would be too, if you, you come and visit. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much for joining us today and your insightful input and everybody on the line. We look forward to hearing from you and uh, be in touch soon. Bye now.